I was hoping I wouldn't have to do a video today, but I got a message from an estate agent this morning that, that made me realize that things are worse than I thought. Is the media being sensational or is there about to be a property market collapse? Well, the answer to that decides whether or not people are going to end up in negative equity and whether or not estate agency businesses are going to survive or not. So in this video, I'm going to give you eight facts that you can check for yourself with the sources and then you can decide for yourself whether or not you think the property market is at risk of collapsing. Spoiler alert, <laughs> having been looking at these facts myself for a while, uh, I think the chances are very high, very high. Things can change suddenly and things can get fixed, but uh, at the moment, the way everything's looking, it's bad, it's getting worse, and the chances of a property market collapse are higher than they have been since the early 90s. Here's my reasons why. Uh, and forgive the noise, oh, this is a quick, uh, unex unintended video I'm just doing in my kitchen on a Saturday morning. So, this video is intended for agents and home movers alike, because you guys have got to work very well together to help minimise the impact if there is a property collapse. And there are agents out there who have not been operating long enough to remember what a really bad price downturn is like. And I'm not talking about 2007, 2008. I'm talking about the 1990s, when there was negative equity. Okay, negative equity ruins lives and businesses. And it's when people are trapped in homes that they need to sell, but they can't because the house is worth less than the mortgage they took out to buy it. And that's as bad for estate agents as it is for people uh, in the houses. So I'm gonna give you eight facts, and then you can decide for yourself whether or not you think they are going to increase or decrease the chance of a property market collapse. Number one. Everybody knows that energy prices have gone up, but let me give you uh, a, a very simple mathematical fact. Energy price rises have risen by, let's say, £400 a month is on average what it is already. And let's even forget the fact that they're going up again in October and up again in January to never before seen levels. OK, just with the increase you've already had. That's taken about £400 a month out of the average first time buyer's budget. Now, whether or not buyers are factoring that into their budgeting, it doesn't matter because the mortgage companies are and it's affecting affordability calculations. And £400 a month taken out of your disposable income after mortgage or rent translates to an £80,000 lower buying power, okay, out of a mortgage over 25 years, at least £80,000, okay? £400 a month taken out of your monthly outgoings or monthly availability to spend is like taking 80 grand out of the budget you've got to buy a house. Now, on average house prices right now, you're talking about 20, 25% just right there on that one fact alone. Just energy prices taking that much money out of the market before any of these other facts, okay? And all the links I've provided are to government websites or university websites. They are, because uh, I don't trust the media, um, they spin stuff. I've given you facts you can check in the links below this video so you can check for yourself. Don't take my word for it, but go and look at the facts and make a decision for yourself because if you don't, you're sleepwalking into a potential life-changing nightmare. And estate agents, the, the reason I'm doing this video is because the agent that sent me a message this morning questioning whether or not there's a looming collapse is a really mature and senior, been around the block, been around a long time, highly respected industry advisor and if he's got his hands over his eyes and his ears about this that means the agents he's advising are and you've got to remember this as an agent your clients are trusting your advice and if your advice is based on less than all of the relevant information you are let, not only letting down your clients you're letting down yourself and increasing the risk to your business so it is as important in fact arguably more important than agents check this information out uh, than buyers and sellers do, but I recommend everyone does. So point number one of eight, energy prices are taking about £80,000 out of first-time buyers buying power. Everyone's buying power, in fact, but especially first-time buyers. Point number two, inflation. Everyone's heard about that. Inflation makes people's buying power shrink faster than anything else other than very high interest on loans or credit cards. Um, 
nothing. This is why the Bank of England's sole job is to keep inflation down. OK, inflation hits people's pockets harder than anything. And so ask yourself the question, is the very bad and worsening inflation going to hit buyers' budgets? The answer is obvious. It's going to. And you know, just on 10% inflation, you're talking about 20,000 quid reduction in how much they can afford to buy, at least. That's before it goes up, right? So just on points one and two, there is a mathematical argument that the buying power that buyers have is going to be reduced by around £100,000, OK? And with average property prices between 250 and 300000 you're talking about average property prices dropping to nearer 200000 after this is done. This is before everything else. Now, look, let's look at employment. People always say, oh, if employment, that employment's a really good indicator of confidence and everything else. Well, employment is high, but this it's hiding something. Income is very low. And for the first time ever, we've got full-time employed people unable to pay their bills already. Already. Before cost of living has got worse, winter fuel bills have gone up, etc. Okay? There are already people in work who can't afford their basics. And that's being made worse by inflation. Sorry, um, that's been made worse. Hang on, let me get back here. Yes, so the people already in full-time employment, unable to pay their basics, and that's only going to get worse. And if they've got less money to spend out there, then that fuels point number four, which is the recession. So recessions always lead to job losses. OK, so we can expect unemployment to start going back up. It might be very high now, but it doesn't mean it's going to stay high. And all the indicators look that look as though jobs, the job market is going to weaken again. That's so number four. We're heading into a recession. Number five, rents are rising. That means that disposable income of those tenants is shrinking and that fuels a recession as well. Interest rates. The Bank of England has put interest rates up. It doesn't matter that they're still low. The fact is that they're going up. And if they go up, it hits buying power. It hits house buying power. OK, and they're going up. They've gone up very sharply and they're going to go up even more sharply because the Bank of England's first responsibility is to keep inflation down. And it's the only tool that it's got. OK, not only does interest rates going up hit mortgage uh, costs and therefore affordability of property, it also means that businesses who are borrowing money are going to be facing higher interest rates and that is going to lead to more business failures and more job losses. That's what happens in a recession. So that's interest rates number six. Number seven, when first time buyers buying power is hit and affected, nothing has a sharper downward effect on property prices than that because first time buyer demand underpins property market and property prices, okay? So when you pull the rug un from under the property market price pyramid, the rest will come tumbling down, okay? You might argue there's a two-tier market and that above two million quid, those people are unaffected. Maybe, maybe, but there is still some effect on it. Um, and point number eight, you may have heard about quantitative easing, which is basically when the Bank of England prints money, because, and this is an emergency measure. They started printing money after the, the financial crisis, the credit crunch of 2008. And it's only ever supposed to be a short-term thing, but they've been doing it non-stop until December 2021. They've, so we've had 13 years of the Bank of England printing money, and that has artificially propped up the economy. In December 2021, they stopped dead. And in fact, they started to do the opposite, like unprinting money. Printing money is pushing money out into the economy. And Quantitative tightening, which is the opposite of easing, is like taking that money back from the economy, which they have to do for reasons I won't go into, but I'll link to an article that you can read about it. This means less money for banks to lend, for mortgages and for loans and for everything else, which in turn fuels recessionary pressures. OK, now those are eight facts and they're just domestic UK facts. There are also international facts that affect our market that I won't go into in this video, but none of those are positive either. All of those are negative. The war in Ukraine, the tensions between America and China, uh, instability on international fuel prices. All of it is bad. So let me just repeat myself. 
Negative equity ruins lives and businesses. And the decisions buyers are making today are going to determine whether or not they end up in negative equity or not. Now, estate agents watching this are going to be saying, Charlie, please shut up. You're going to be making my pipeline fall apart. You're going to be making my deals fall through. You're going to be making buyers run for cover. Well, my view is that as estate agents professionally advising your clients, you have an equal duty to your clients or interests that you have to your own. Are transaction volumes likely to get hit? Yes. Does not talking about that stop that from happening? No, it might slow it down. But my view is that I would rather give people who are unaware of this looming problem upfront information to make their own decisions about it than go, shh, everyone stop talking about the, the, the don't, don't, don't talk the market down, don't talk the market down. Well, if you take that approach, you're increasing the risk of people innocently paying top price at the top of the market and end up in negative equity, losing their job, not being able to pay their mortgage, losing the house and losing everything. Okay? And to me, that has a higher moral responsibility to be addressed than just keeping a transaction pipeline going right now. Now, I'm not saying, especially if you're a self-employed agent, that your income is any less important than other people's. But what you cannot do is prop up your own business at the expense of other people. That's just my view, okay? As a human being, I don't want to be propping my business up at the, by taking advantage of other people's vulnerability or naivety or lack of knowledge, okay? Personal choice for you guys. If you're an estate agent and you're happy to keep on telling people what they want to hear to keep those transactions going, you've got to live with that. But I'm sorry, I think any agent that is talking to their clients is going, everything's fine. I mean, yeah, maybe next year price. I mean, when, when agents start saying as they are now that prices are slightly softening, well, that's as strong as they ever say it. So let me qualify the use of the word collapse. 25 to 30% drop in house prices potentially, that's a collapse. Does it happen overnight? No. But what you do get and sellers and buyers both need to know this because there are people who can still move. There will still be transactions. There are people who've got the financial strength to go out and buy a first time property now. I know this because I've got people messaging me on the Moving Home and Charlie channel saying exactly that and asking for advice. If you need a home and you can afford a home and, you can, and you're taking a long term view, the property market is cyclical and after the drop, it will come back up. You've got to make sure that you don't overpay right now, but pay a fair market price and accept the fact that prices are going to come down, but you're going to have a home. That's the most important thing. Um, I've done other videos and I will be doing a lot more videos in more detail on all these points in the coming week, but I wanted to get something out there now. Heads up for everybody. Buyers don't need to run for cover unless you are stretching yourself to buy what you're trying to buy. Okay, if you can comfortably afford it and you want to move into a new home, go ahead and do so. Just make sure you're not overpaying. Okay, the way to do that is to say to the agent, are there any other offers on this property? And if not, then you need to say to the agent, don't, I don't, listen, I want to buy the property, but I'm not going to overpay. Your seller needs to, to bring his price down, okay? And if you're a seller and you need to sell, you need to be ready to be dropping your price. If you're already on the market and not selling, I would be going back to any offers that you've had in the past and seeing if they're still good. And if you're an agent, you need to take a long-term view now for your business. You need clients to trust you. You want people with a good property to come to you. You want the good clients to come to you, the ones that are going to listen to you. Because uh, if you've got the good properties that are priced reasonably, you're going to get the buyers and therefore you're going to get the transactions. Okay, so prices are going to fall. In my opinion, it's almost a mathematical certainty. Exactly when and how much, who knows? My rough estimate is a 10% drop this year, a sharper drop in January, February, March next year, bottoming out in the middle of next year, summer, autumn next year. And then after that, how, how quickly they come back is too hard to predict at this point. That's the worst case scenario, okay? That's the worst case scenario, but I think it is a likely worst case scenario. So guys, if you disagree with me, give me your facts, your mathematical researched information as to why you don't agree that there's a chance of a property collapse, okay? If you do agree with me, I, I urge you to check the links for the sources for all this information Make up uh, your own mind. If you're buying and you want to buy a new home, proceed, just don't overpay. If you're selling and you need to sell, 
get more realistic on your price sooner than other people. Um, the worst case scenario for a seller is someone that takes too long to catch up with the market and drops their price, but it's already too late, the, the, the market's dropped too far away and you're just chasing the market down. Don't be that seller. I know agents will, will agree with me on this, right? If you need to sell, you take a bigger drop now rather than missing the market and then having to chase it down 20, 30%. All right? Needing to move doesn't mean you'll be able to move. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm sorry. This is, there's no point in sugarcoating a turd, right? The, the news is bad. Let's not pretend otherwise. It's really important, guys. Um, send me your questions if you want. Uh, send me your counter arguments if you've got them. But please be careful. Make sure you're prepared, especially if you're an estate agent. Make sure you're prepared for the, for the market. Be one of those agents that does know what's happening and you'll get the transactions. Thanks, guys. All the best. Have a good weekend. See you on the next video.